About two and a half years ago, I released a video here on my YouTube channel of the Blackmagic Design Hyperdeck Studio Mini. And at the time, the product was brand new. And since that time, Blackmagic has added a lot of new features to it. And I also I, can, I know that I can do a higher quality video than what I did before. So I wanted to update that video, make sure that I include all the new features that Blackmagic has added to this product since that original review. And just kind of let you know my thoughts after having used the product for two and a half years at this point. So, hey everyone, my name is Doug. I run a uh, video production company in Orem, Utah called DJP. We do live events of all types. You can check out our website at www.djprod.biz. And I use Blackmagic design products quite heavily, among among others. Uh, I use Sony cameras and Blackmagic for my switcher and others. And I've been using these Hyperdeck Studio mini recorders now as my primary recorders for about two and a half years. But prior to that, I was using some of the Hyperdeck Studio products, the full-size rack mount units. And when these came out, I saw a good opportunity in order to increase the density of recorders in my equipment rack. Now, if you haven't used one of these products, I want to take you on a little bit of a walkthrough about uh, the, some of the controls that are on there and the connections that are on the back. If you take a look at the front here, you can see we've got some of your basic controls. We've got your uh, your two card slots. It takes SD cards. And then you have your your, your typical transport control. So your, your play, your stop, uh, record, jog, fast forward and rewind. Uh, and then these two buttons here, menu and set, are for navigating the menus in order to set up the configuration the way you need it. Of course, you get a nice screen there that shows you the video, your audio levels, time code, playback information, as letting you know, as well as letting you know which card you're currently playing from. And when you're in record mode, that also lets you know how much time you have remaining on your current card. When one card fills up, it does automatically spill over to the other, just for a point of point of reference there. Uh, then over here on the right side, you have the jog shuttle control. Now to let you guys in on a little secret, something that I did not know about this product for a long time, this, these products actually do have a way to fast forward and rewind. Normally, these two navigation buttons you have here are only for navigating between clips, so you can only go to the next and previous clips, and not even holding the buttons down would put you in the fast forward and rewind mode. But there actually is a way to do that. So if you come up here and you press the jog button, Press it once in playback mode that puts you in jog mode where you navigate through the, the video one frame at a time. But if you press it a second time, that actually puts you in shuttle mode. And at that point, you can actually rotate it to the right to play faster or go back and rotate it to the left to, to play in reverse. Or you can actually play any number of speeds in between, quarter speed, half speed, three quarter speed, one time, and all the way up to 16 times normal speed. So there there you're actually able to do your fast forward and rewind, which is something that's not in the manual, and it took me nearly two years to figure that one out. So there's a cool feature that the unit actually has, which is not documented. So if you were wondering about how to navigate within inside of a clip, that's how you do it. Now if you want to go into record mode, you of course press stop. And then you can press the record button once. Instead of recording right away, that actually puts you into record mode. And so you can, there you can see a preview of my camera uh, up on the screen there. When you want to start recording, you press that button a second time. And it's hard to see on camera, but it actually that button actually does light up red and light, let you know that it's recording. Also, you can see the red LED above the slot that it's currently using. And you see that on the screen, there's also the red indicator there as well. One of the reasons this unit has two slots is so that when one card fills up, it'll automatically spill over onto the other. That does give you a chance to eject the full card, copy it onto a computer, empty it, and then put it back in here, or replace it with another empty card. That way you can basically record indefinitely. There's no hard limitation on how long you can actually make a recording with this unit. Another thing you can do here with this, with the front panel, is you press and hold this record button, it will actually switch from the A card to the B card, or vice versa. So there you go. So now it's recording on card 2 instead of card 1. That way, if you wanted to eject the first card to start copying files, you can do that. And the transition from one of those clips to the other is completely seamless. So if you put those clips adjacent to one another on a timeline in your video editor, there's absolutely no interruption. Now if we turn this around to the back, we'll be able to see the different connections that are. Of course, we start with the power connection. Uh, Blackmagic never includes power cords for their products, so if you buy one of those, you're going to want to, make, want to make sure you order a separate power cord. And you've got a USB port, it's a USB-C port, and that's used almost, pretty much only for firmware upgrades. Uh, there's a couple of configurations options you can do from within the, the HyperDeck software, but in reality, it doesn't make a lot of sense as you get a lot more configuration options from the front panel. And then you have an Ethernet jack, and that Ethernet jack can be used 
uh, to control the unit remotely, and it also can be used to, to transfer files using FTP to and from the unit. So uh, if this is installed somewhere away from from uh, where you're working, you can actually upload files to it, to the unit uh, over FTP. And then we have our reference in and reference out. These are basically your sync signals, so you're able to make sure that multiple decks are the video signals are synchronized. Then down at the bottom here, we have the remote in. This is an RS-422. It uses the Sony standard protocol for, for, for decks that have been used in the pro video world for decades. Uh, and of course, then above, we have, we have an HDMI port. These two SDIs here, these are our outputs. So we have an A and a B. Most of the time, these are outputting the same video. So if you're in playback mode, you get your playback video there. Uh, when you're in record mode, you get your basically the video that you're recording. Uh, the one exception to that is if you happen to be playing back a video with an alpha channel, such as a ProRes 4444, output B will output your key, while output A is doing your fill. That way you can actually use these recorders to do playback of pre-rendered video with an alpha channel. So that's that's a pretty neat feature. And of course, the last connection on here is the SDI video input. This will accept pretty much any video signal from standard def all the way up to Ultra HD at up to 30 frames per second. I should mention one of the other neat things about this Ethernet jack is it actually supports power over Ethernet plus in order to power the unit. So if you wanted to, you can actually power this over Ethernet. You don't have to necessarily plug in a, an AC power connection here on the back. If you happen to have a network switch that offers power over, power over Ethernet, the, make sure it's the plus variant, then you can actually power the unit over Ethernet. And I actually do that in my main video production rack. So my HyperDeck Studio Minis in my main production rack are actually being powered over Ethernet. Now, these units record on SD cards, but you're probably not going to be able to go to your local big box store and pick up a card that's going to be fast enough. You need to make sure that your cards you're getting for this are certified in order to run at the high speeds that are required for the amount of data that these units happen to be recording, especially if you get into 4K Ultra HD. The card that I've found to be the most reliable, and I've tried a ton of different ones, and that's going to be the Lexar 1000X or the 2000X series. Now, these cards are able to write over 100 megabytes per second and when you get into 4k ultra hd video those are really the kind of speeds that you need in order for that to be reliable if you're just recording high definition you can get away with some slower cards uh, cards that are able to write about 80 megabytes a second will usually be okay but i've had problems with even some of those as well so if you want a card that's going to be reliable and these are actually a tremendous value especially if you get it in the 256 gig variant these work great, even 4K video. I've had no trouble whatsoever, and that's this is the only model of card that I can say that about. Every other type of card that I've tried in here, I've had problems with dropped frames occasionally. Now, I've got a link to those cards down in the video description down below, and also a link to the portion of my website where I did card performance testing. You can be able to see the results there. The HyperDeck Studio Mini is probably one of the most versatile recorders out there in terms of the number of video codecs it supports, especially when you talk about the different number of different variants that are that are there. So in terms of the major formats that these can record, you've got ProRes, you've got DNX HD and DNX HR, and then you've got H.264. Now the H.264 is only available when you're doing high definition. It's not usable in 4K. The other restriction is uh, it's not able to play back H.264 files that are created elsewhere. It can play back its own, but if you create an H.264 file, say, in Adobe Premiere, it won't be able to, to play that back. Now, in terms of the ProRes and the DNxHD and DNxHR, you are able to play back files that you create on the computer and, and copy to an SD card or upload via FTP. Now, you might have to do a little bit of tweaking and experimentation in order to get a ProRes or DNxHD file that you create on the computer to play back on here, but ultimately, they can do it. It works pretty well. Because these units have the ability to play a file and loop it seamlessly over and over again, one of the things that I've done with them is to play back an animated graphic and use that as a background behind other video. I'll just export the video in Adobe Premiere using ProRes and then copy it to an SD card and put that in the unit. I'll press the play button to start playback and then press the play button one more time and that puts it into loop mode and it'll play the same video over and over and over again. One problem that some people have with some Blackmagic products, if they don't give them adequate ventilation, is they can get a little bit hot. I have not experienced that with the HyperDeck Studio Mini. It can get a little bit warm, but I've never seen it actually get hot, even if I have multiple units stacked together. There is a cooling fan here on the right side of the unit, but it is pretty quiet, and it does do an adequate job of keeping the unit cool. 
One of the things that Blackmagic has added in some of the newer versions of the firmware for this unit is the ability for it to be controlled via the ATEM software control that's used with their switchers. Now if you go over here into Preferences, go to the Hyperdeck tab, type in the IP address of your unit, and press Connect, the unit is now controllable from within the ATEM software. If you set an input and tell it to auto roll, as soon as you cut to that input, it will actually start playback. Of course, you can actually control them manually as well. And to do that, you can go up to the Media Players menu, and then click on Hyperdex, then you can control up to four recorders. You'll even see a list of clips here, and you can actually navigate between them. That's not actually the only way to control these units, though. They actually have a command interface that you can access via a utility like Telnet, where you can issue commands like play, record, stop, and among others. If you just type the question mark key and hit enter, it'll show you the list of commands. There's one other form of connectivity you get with these, and that's FTP. So if I open up my window here, you can see that I actually have six video clips. I can transfer any one of those at any time. It can be basically just a drag and drop operation if you have a nice FTP client. The downside to using FTP with these to transfer files, it's not very fast. The fastest I've seen is about 30 megabytes per second you can get a lot faster by actually physically transferring the card. All right, so what are my thoughts on this? Well, it's, first of all, let's go over some of the pros. First of all, it's a very compact unit. As mentioned, you, you can get three of these side by side in one single rack space. Blackmagic actually makes a shelf specifically for that purpose. It makes it really easy to install just with two screws on the bottom. The next thing that I would mention is these are actually pretty reliable. So I've been using them for two and a half years, and with the latest firmware, I have not had any problems with them whatsoever. Uh, except in a couple of rare circumstances where I've got a really unreliable source video and any any recorder would actually struggle with that. Originally these had a problem where they would stop recording if there was any sort of interruption in the signal whatsoever. That has been resolved. If your input signal is lost, it will actually still keep recording for some period of time and then automatically pick up when the signal returns. It might have been nice for Blackmagic to have a feature where it creates a new clip each time that happens, but at least it does keep, keep recording with the black signal, so you won't lose really sync. The fact that these have so many different recording codec options is a pretty nice feature as well. Between ProRes, DNxHD, and H.264, you're given a lot of options. I actually use ProRes for high-quality recordings, and then very often I'll have another recorder going that's recording an H.264 file. If I need to very quickly get a, a copy of the video to a client, I can just hand them the card with the H.264 and get them going before I have a chance to do any editing. The fact that these have a remote control capability is actually really nice as well. So I've got seven of these recorders here in my trailer, and the fact that they have remote control means I can record them from the front, even though they all exist in the back of the trailer. The fact that these use SD cards, and there are some pretty inexpensive options out there, is pretty nice as well. Some of their older products relied on SSDs, and when you get into high capacities, SSDs can get pretty expensive, especially the ones that are going to be fast enough for recording video in real time. The fact that I can get Lexar cards that are capable of recording 4K and a 256 gig size for about $58 is pretty phenomenal. The last feature that I want to mention that I really like is the ability to do FTP transfers. Being able to transfer files remotely is actually pretty cool, even if it is a little bit slow. Now let's get into some of the cons. First one that I want to mention is I don't like the fact that it doesn't have an HDMI input. The only video input on these units is SDI. Most of the time that's okay, but every once in a while I have a situation where I want to record something where HDMI input would be a lot more convenient. Say for example if I want to record video coming off of a computer. There aren't very many computers out there that have SDI outputs, so it would have been nice to have an HDMI input. Now, in terms of the 4K support, it's nice that they're able to do 4K, but the fact that it's limited to 30 frames per second can be a little bit inconvenient for some people. Another downside to the small size of this unit is because it's so small, it doesn't have room for all the dedicated buttons that it would have been nice. I would have really liked to see dedicated fast forward and rewind. The fact that I have to go into a menu in order to get to that functionality is a little bit inconvenient at times. Another feature that I would have really liked to have seen on here would be an SDI loop output. So it takes whatever's on the SDI input and always outputs it. So as is, if I want to record the same signal that I'm sending somewhere else, I either have to run through a distribution amplifier or a video hub a routing switcher of some sort. Or make sure that this is the last unit in the chain, because once it gets to here, there is no loop in order to send it somewhere else. 
Another feature that would have been really nice on here, although I don't consider it essential, is the ability to record to both cards simultaneously. That gives you a chance to have a backup. Every once in a while, SD cards do fail. If you've got a critical situation where you can't lose the video for your client, and being able to record to two cards simultaneously would have been nice. As is, if you want a backup, you're having to record to two separate recorders simultaneously. It's not the end of the world, but it would have been nice to be able to do it in one. The last thing that I would really like to see on here, and it would make it very useful for doing instant replay, would be simultaneous playback and recording. Or at least, at a very minimum, faster switching between the two. Right now, as the product currently exists, it takes about four seconds to switch from playback mode to recording mode or vice versa. Which means that if you want to use this in a live environment where things are moving quickly, and you wanted to potentially do something with instant replay, it's a little bit difficult and you've got some nice long delays. Simultaneous playback and recording would have been really cool, although I understand why that's not included. Alright, so there it is, the HyperDeck Studio Mini from Blackmagic Design. This product is currently priced at $695. It's available pretty widely. In terms of recommendations, would I recommend this product? I'm going to have to say absolutely yes. With the current version of the firmware, this thing I would consider to be very, very solid, very stable, very reliable. I've been using these very heavily for two and a half years now, and I'm quite happy with it in this current incarnation. There are very few things that I would change. So if you guys are actually interested in buying this, I would really appreciate you using the link that I have in the video description down below. A portion of that sale comes back here to this channel in order to help fund videos like this and reviewing products and so forth. So it doesn't cost you any extra to use those links, so I'd really appreciate you doing that. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I try to release new videos related to video production about once a week. If you want to help this channel, you can also go to Patreon and sign up there. These videos take a lot of time to create, and anytime I'm working on one of these videos, it means I'm not working on a video for one of my clients. Those of you who run your own video production business, please take a look at my website, crewaxis.com. I've been building the site for about two and a half years. I use it to run my own business, and I think it's actually the best product out there for helping to run a video production business. It helps you to hire a crew, communicate with your crew and your customers, helps keep track of your equipment, as well as your finances. And that's really just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of other stuff there too. There are plans from free all the way up to enterprise, and if you use the link in the description down below, you'll have access to some plans that aren't available anywhere else. Thanks everyone for watching, and have a fantastic day.